I don't speak Chinese. Um, <laughs> yeah, English. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's to take, is it? Do I have to pay for it? No, not at all, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's not on this one, no. Is it on that one? But maybe that's actually quite an easy address to remember. Yeah, it's literally just two letters in a dot org. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm intrigued by um, the title because. I was at the Natural History Museum yesterday and I learned an awful lot, I, I feel, about where life comes from, so... What's your opinion, may I ask? Um, I just follow what science tells us, because scientists dedicate their careers, don't they, to learn about where we come from and those questions, so... Is your position any different from scientists? Well, I think so, because we believe there is a creator. Right. 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 So... So you believe you don't believe in evolution then? To a point, yeah, there are some things that is that evolve, but not mankind like you and I. You know, the evolution of say butterflies and things like those. We believe in those things. Also oh, life did evolve, but only to a certain extent, is that what you believe? No, we say life was created. You know, right. created the man and the woman. But there are some things that evolve. Some things but, evolve. Yes. Will it say that in here as well? Well, well, that's right, yes. Oh, it will, okay. But not mankind like you and I, we were created. That's we're different. Right. That's right, yes. Okay. Yes. And um, so, if, if, is there like a, any kind of study program involved? Yes, there is, yes, yes. yes. Right, and that's, that's going to be on the website, is it? That's right, yes, that's right. Yes. Okay. And on the website, look up in the Bible, Genesis 1, yeah. about creation. Oh, I know, I know that. I know enough about the Bible to know what it says in Genesis 1 verse 1. Yeah, the whole of it, how God created things step by step. Yeah? But doesn't, because uh, I do know a little bit about the Bible, and doesn't it say that, for example, the earth was created and then the sun and stars were created? That's right. Which isn't the order that we know the universe was created in. Well, the, the, I don't know what about the scientific Yeah, form, yeah. Know, because obviously Earth is orbiting the Sun right, yes. and Earth formed due to gravitational forces bringing together dust and gas particles. Right, yes. You need the Sun to orbit, so you can't have the Earth before the Sun. Exactly. That's right. right. Yes. And we don't believe in a 24-hour creation. As right. The Bible said it's 20, you know, but it's not a one-day thing. Oh, not a one-day. Okay. How many days is it? Study. Free Bible study. The Bible tells you with Jehovah God a thousand years is like a day. Okay. So maybe it was okay. And and if I study with Jehovah's Witnesses and um, let's say I join Jehovah's Witnesses, am I then allowed to leave without any repercussions or Okay. Ah, uh, you're right. Yeah. You know, we're not. Um, I mean, it's a voluntary thing, really. What we're about is we we, we want to help people learn about the Bible. Right. And and try and you know, uh, I don't know what questions. You know, if we can help find you to find the answers to your specific questions. It's not a cookie cutter kind of thing. Everyone's different. We, you, you know what concerns you? What would you? You know, some people are concerned about the rising cost of living. Yeah, yeah. I think so, climate change is a very big issue. Climate change is a big issue. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just feel as though there's a lot of closed-mindedness, particularly when it comes to religion, and sometimes people, people sincerely held beliefs can cause other people to suffer, you know, especially when we're talking about like extreme sorry, religious. I'm just going to sure, yeah, yeah. Going yeah, that's I'm fine. Stay to you, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, thank you, yeah.
Do, do you, are you here very often doing this, this work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, um, so the question I was asking your colleague before was, you know, if I join, and, and I, because there are some, I know there are some organizations of, you know, that are religious in nature where, where you join, and then if you decide to leave later on, it's almost like they punish you. Honestly, it's not a question of for us. It's an open, basically, it's an invitation for you to come right. and learn with. The, I'll show you what happens at a kingdom hall. Like yeah. that's basically, what you to expect yeah. on a first visit to a place of. It's not a question of signing up or joining. It's free. There's no commitment. There's no obligation. No obligation. At first to learn. What, what we're doing is we're inviting you to our place. We need right. To yeah. Yeah. A quick video. Okay. All right. I've got it actually here. By the way, my name's. I didn't ask your name. I'm Lloyd. Nice to meet you, Lloyd. Nice to meet you. So, um... Yeah. Thank you. Don't want your glasses yeah. getting dirty, do we? No, no, I cut myself <laughs> on the thing and that's happened. Oh, dear. Uh, so, where are we? So, what happens at the Kingdom Hall? We play it in English. Uh, I'll have to go to the home page for it, because... Oh, there you go. So, what happens at the Kingdom Hall? All around the world, people come together every week at places of worship called Kingdom Halls. Have you ever wondered what happens inside a Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses? It's a place where Bible study programs and lectures are held each week. The first time I attended a meeting, I felt very happy. The atmosphere was so good. I've never seen anything like it anywhere else. The people are loving, orderly, and show an interest in people. Every meeting is open to the public. Seats are free and no collections are ever taken. Families are invited to attend and learn together. All meetings begin and end with song and prayer. One meeting, usually held on the weekend, includes a 30-minute Bible discourse especially designed for the general public. After that, there's a question and answer discussion based on an article in the study edition of the Watchtower magazine. Participation is always voluntary. At one of the meetings during the week, we not only study the Bible, but also receive training in public speaking. Everyone is invited to the Christian meetings, including those who are not Jehovah's Witnesses. You can go into any Kingdom Hall and receive the same program of Bible instruction. Bible education, upbuilding association, and the opportunity to praise God await you at Christian meetings of Jehovah's Witnesses. To find a Kingdom Hall near you, please visit the About Us section and fill in the congregation meeting search. So that's on our website, right. jw.org. Okay. So there's an About Us section quite a difficult website for me to remember if I'm honest my memory's not that good oh, I'm joking I think I'm, jo I'm joking uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have me there for yeah yeah um, I like the fact that there was uh, it was very multicultural yeah uh, nice to see such diversification yeah in with you know people from different cultures and um, nations and ethnic groups. I guess um, what I found interesting as well was it's, it showed like families coming in and like I've looked into Scientology a little bit and they have this thing called disconnection where if you, let's say you become a Scientologist, if you find that you no longer agree with it and let's say you are vocal about disagreeing with it, you're what's called disconnected as a suppressive person. Is, is there anything like that at all that I should be wary of? No? You know, th there's a disciplining arrangement in the Christian congregation. Right. 
which is called distiller shipping. Right. Which some people have, have you know, I mean, it's basically, I, I, have you heard of, uh, I don't know, maybe the term excommunication in, in, in some in some terms. Yeah, and I'm I don't know what excommunication is, Basically, yeah. that's not what this is. Yeah. Being, distiller shipping is, is, a, is, is a, I, I mean, if you had a Bible study with us, you'd understand. What, basically, it's just a, it's a discipline in arrangement, right? To protect the congregation, right? And to and to help the individual to make straight paths for their feet to to, to restore their relationship with them. right? But that's not. I mean, it's not. I mean, that's only for somebody who's a dedicated baptized witness who's really erred. It's a, it's a loving arrangement to help someone sure be corrected. Sure. It's well, not a. It's, it's nothing like disconnection. Well, we don't believe in disconnect. We believe in unity. Yeah. And we, yeah. It's a loving. This we're a loving brotherhood. We're a family. Sure. Yeah. Well, that came across in the video. I'm, I'm, yeah. But when you say disciplining, I'm thinking purely from the point of view of, let's say someone, um, let's say one of those little children that's going into the kingdom hall with their family. Yeah. Let's say they grow up, and for whatever reason, after they've been baptized they decide, actually, I don't believe this anymore. I, I, um, which, like you say, it's their choice. Um, would they be, like, disconnected from their parents? In fact, we, we don't, the congregation doesn't turn away. You know, it, it's like some people to decide to, to, to leave on, on their, of their own free will. Yeah. I mean, free will is something that God has given us. Right. And we're sad to see them go, just like I'm sure you, as a let's say a loving parent, if they, you know, sometimes your, your child will get up and go, and they, yeah. they, they make decisions for themselves. But what, what, what we're trying to say is that if someone decides to leave, it's their choice. We're not, we're not forced. You're not bound to something. Right. It, it's, it, it's each one of us has a, a, a responsibility. When we make a dedication, when we learn that, that this is what we want to do, we make a yeah. dedication. That's yeah. a personal choice. So it's not like you. You decide. There's no, you, so you won't you won't be penalised if you get baptised and you later decide that you don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. It's not like you're going to be punished by, let's say, your family not being able to talk to you no, again. No, there's not, no, not no. But we would obviously try to, you know, to help you to return to Jehovah. Right. We want you lovingly, but we, we wouldn't. You know, we try, and, mm. and that has happened. There's quite mm. a few who have left. Yeah. And, uh, have not returned. Mm -hmm. Many have returned. Mm -hmm. After a while, they've been inactive or been away from the congregation. Then they've realized, they've repeated, you know, they've, they've missed. They've, they felt that they were missing out on something, didn't they? I'm thinking more about people who get baptized and then they just, they say, you know, I don't believe this anymore and I don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness anymore. Would they would they be disciplined or, or, or anything? It's choice. At, at, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's yeah. you know, their decision. It's their decision. And it, so, it, if I if I do this study on the JW.org, yeah, yeah. um, what's what's the kind of benefit? I mean, I, I consider myself a good person. Yeah. So, surely it's okay for me to just be a good person, or, or is is there more to it involved? Would you say? You know, you've got some excellent questions. Yeah. What, what, what would you encourage? What I would recommend yeah. is we have a, an introductory Bible course. Yeah. It's a, it's a brochure entitled Enjoy Life Forever. Yeah. Does anybody have an Enjoy Life Forever brochure on them? I don't have one. I could show you the electronic version. Everything's available on our website, by the way. Enjoy Life Forever? Yeah. You can enjoy life forever. Maybe oh, okay. our dear sister okay. has one in English. She may have one with her. I normally carry one with me, but today, because I'm, yeah. I don't have one with me in English. That's all right. I, I'm sorry if I'm taking up too much of your time, by no, the way. we're here for you. This is right. why we're here. Okay. This is the reason why we're here. Right. You're not taking our time. In fact, okay. we have all the time in the world. Okay. This is the reason why we do this. Okay. It's really nice to meet you, Lloyd. And nice thank to you meet for your, you, yeah. Got a very good question. I mean, interesting question. Yeah. And, but you will find answers to your questions. Okay. In fact, Jesus said, keep on asking and you will find. Keep on knocking. Sure. And, you, and it'll be open to you. Okay. So this is a, a, basically a free introductory Bible course. It's three lessons. Yeah. If you look at the back page, yeah, it's just basically. I mean, this, you know, what do you think? Is, is it possible to enjoy life forever? What would you say? Well, everyone dies, so no. Yeah. 
So why do we? Have you ever thought why we grow old, get sick, and die? Well, because th there's no such thing as a as a creature on our planet that lives indefinitely. I mean, there are some Greenland sharks that live for like five, six hundred years, but that seems to be the and there's some bacteria that have been kind of dug up in ice samples that have been reanimated after thousands of years, but even they have a shelf life, you know? True. Yeah. But did you know that the Bible teaches in Psalm 37 verse 29 yeah. that the righteous will possess the earth right. and they will live forever? Right. So that God's original purpose was not for man, for you and I to die at all. He right. actually designed us to live forever. In fact, if I were to ask you, well, what, you know, on what date would you like to die? I don't think you'd give me a date, could you? Well, it depends to what extent mental health is a problem for me. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you, if you had good mental <laughs> yeah, health, yeah. physical health and everything, I'm yeah. sure you wouldn't want to die. I mean, is there lots of things in life that you'd still like to do if you could, if you had the time and energy and health? I, don't, I, I think it's, it's in our DNA to uh, to try not to die unless there's, unless we do have mental health issues um, but I also think that um, our planet has a finite number of spaces on it uh, so like right now we're near, nearing eight billion people on the planet and in terms of like I say we were saying to your colleague climate change um, our, our planet is already overwhelmed I think by the demands placed on it by a population of 8 billion. And if, if, if there were to be no death, then the population would balloon still further and natural resources would be consumed at a greater extent. So that, I agree. The yeah. way that man, the state that we're living in now, yeah. we are living in a world in turmoil. Yeah. We agree with you. Yeah. In fact, we believe that we're at a point now. Yeah. The Bible actually says that, did you know that the Bible says that we're living in the last days? Let me show you a scripture. Very brief. right, sure. Uh, so the Bible. Okay, in Second Timothy. So this is these yeah. are prophetic words written by the Apostle Paul to yeah. Timothy in the first century, and he said, "Oh, it's actually Second Timothy chapter three. So he said, "But know this: that in the last days, yeah. critical times, hard to deal with, will be here." Yeah. And then he goes on to. You know some of the things that will go on. Mm. You know, like people will be unthankful, disobedient to parents, having no natural affection, not open to any agreement, slanders without self-control, fierce without love and goodness. Uh, I guess if I were to be ultra sceptical, yeah. I would say it would be more of a surprise if the verse said, "For men will be really nice to each other and everyone will agree with each other," yeah. because those are pretty much things that could really be applied at any point in human history. As for as long as there have been humans, people have been forging weapons against each other and sure. going all the way back to Neanderthal times. You know, so it's there's there's always been conflict, is what I'm saying. Okay. And, yeah. But did you notice that it said when this? It's actually referring to this period of time as yeah. the last days. Yeah. The last days. Sure. So that, in a way, is good news. Isn't but it, it also says critical times hard to deal with. Yes. And if if I think about the time I'm living in now, it's difficult though it is, yeah. I think I'd rather be living now than in the 1940s okay, sure. or in the dark ages. Yeah. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah, obviously, because yeah. You know, we, with the technology and science, we've made developments that help yeah. to prolong our lives. I think if you, if you said, here's, here's a time machine, yeah. we'll, you know, we'll allow you to go and live in the 1940s, I don't think I'd get in it. I think I'd stay here, you know? I think, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I think here the Apostle Paul is talking in terms of, I mean, it, so, so, I mean, that's if we, when those words were written, when, when did the Apostle Paul, when, when was uh, Timothy, when did he write to Timothy? In the, was that round about in our common era? In our, you know, I, I don't know exactly the I think it's supposed to be the first century. Yeah, but it'll be in the first century. Yeah. So in the first century. Yeah. So that's not even, so, so about 2000 close to 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Okay. But what he's saying is, the good news about this this prophecy yeah. is that they say in the last days. Right. So if it means that the last days, and it also harmonizes with other Bible prophecies, yeah. it talks about the time of the end. Yeah. Even Jesus said there will be a conclusion of a, si of a system of things. Yeah. So basically what it's saying is that when these things happen, it'll be a sign that 
it'll be uh, uh, the good news is that it'll have to be cut short. Yeah. There'll be an end to it. Right. So basically, there'll be an end to wars, yeah. an end to crime, an end to violence and hatred, and you know all these bad right. things that are happening. Yeah. And what what does the end look like? Well, that's part of it. There's more. But is it so is it is it frightening? Answers? Sounds a bit frightening. No, no, it's actually. That, that, when you see that picture, yeah. does that look positive to you, or does it look? I mean, if you could live forever in a paradise without growing old and getting sick and dying. But is that what it's talking about when it says the end, the last days? Well, I think the end would have to. Uh, there'd be a new beginning, wouldn't there? There'd be a new beginning. Well, I, I understand the concept of what happens after the end, but I'm interested in knowing what the end actually would look like. So let's say okay. I'm, I'm on. I'm, I'm, it, the end has arrived. I'm here in London. What am I seeing? I'll tell you what, you've got a lot of questions. The best thing would be to yeah. have a, a Bible study, because in five okay. minutes here, yeah. I don't want to confuse you in head. You, you, you're going to leave me feeling confused. Okay. And then you'll have spiritual indigestion. Okay. Whereas if you go through this, co this course... I don't like in spiritual indigestion. <laughs> they, don't, they don't do tablets for that, do they? If you go to Boots and ask for tablets for that, no chance. Well, there you go. Yeah, okay. No, honestly, it's been not, I mean, I, I, I've been very happy to continue this conversation with other yeah. I, Look, I'm based in South right. West, South West London. Yeah. We, we, this, this, I'm involved in this uh, project with my colleagues yeah. all around the city of London. So we're, yeah. we're in various parts of the city, okay. as, as you, you probably gathered. Yeah. Where about are you based? Um, I'm from Manchester, oh. uh, but I'm, I'm also, uh, I'm currently living in Croatia. Oh. I have a Croatian business. Uh, media business, so oh, right. make educational videos. And well, we're, we're, yeah. we're in Manchester and we're in Croatia. Right, okay. In fact, I did some studies in Manchester. I did a, a, a course, a, a course for ministers oh, in, right. in Manchester, in Palatine Road, at the Assembly Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, what was that called? What was that called? It was a ministerial training school. Oh, right, really? It was an eight, eight, uh, an eight week course. Okay. And I went to stay with a, a family in, in, in Cheshire, in, in uh, Wilmslow. Oh, Wilmslow, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, are, uh, I know, I know yeah. Wilmslow a little bit, yeah. Great, yeah. yeah. Lovely family. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And they, they hosted me and I stayed with them for a while and, and I went on this course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. That, yeah, I love Manchester. When, when, did, when was that? When did you? So that was in 2008. 2008. Yeah, 2008. Okay, yeah. okay. And are you like a priest? Just a minister. A minister. a minister. We're all ministers, actually. Okay. We're all ordained ministers. But are there not like priests and deacons and that we, kind of we thing? We don't have a clergy class. Right. We don't have a clergy class. We're, we're all ministers. Mormons have elders as well. They have like elder so and so on we, them. We have elders. Yeah. Presbyter are you an elder? It comes from the Greek word presbyteros, an overseer. We yeah. Have shepherd. Yeah, I, I'd serve as an elder in the yeah. congregation. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Which which makes me more more uh, accountable. Oh really? Yeah, you're you're the one. Yeah. Look after the sheep. We're shepherds. You yeah. keep an eye on him, do you? No. Don't let him get up to any nonsense. <laughs> that right? Okay. Yeah. Well, it's really really nice to nice meet, to you. meet you, and thank you for this conversation. No, thank you for And uh, yeah, You've website. Got all the information you want, any you know, you're okay. To take our number if you want more information, or look into our website. Do you have a number? Yeah. Yeah. yeah take my number. You're yeah. Do you do you text? Do you have a number? Um, Let's see here. Take my number. So it's, uh, um, keypad. So it'll be plus four four, will it? Yes, yeah, so four. Uh, so, four. Uh, uh, hang on a minute. Four four. Yeah. And yeah, I'll um, I'll just save that to my contacts. Brilliant. Thanks so much. Meet you. Take care. All Appreciate it. Take care. Bye.